Fox is here and I'm bringing you my weekly wrap up. This is the wrap up for the week between June 20th and 26th. I had a pretty good reading week and I read a lot of manga as well as a couple of novels and I cannot wait to share with you guys. The first book that I would like to talk about is Assassin's Apprentice by Robin Hobb. This is book number one in the Farseer trilogy and I'm reading the books by Robin Hobb for Hop Along Read Along which is organized by Samantha from Sam's Nonsense channel. I will leave uh, the link down below to her channel and her Goodreads page. I really enjoyed this book. This is a high fantasy world and it's about a boy who is a bastard son of one of the princes and he's essentially being dropped off at the doorstep of the castle when he's six years old and from then th nobody really knows what to do with him in the castle. He cannot be accepted as a, leg a legitimate son and at the same time they cannot really turn him away. So he has been raised in the stables by a guy who tends to horses and dogs and there is really nothing special about this boy. He's even called Fitz, which means the bastard or the son of. And he turns out that he has a certain affinity to animals and he kind of is able to connect to them. It's a very interesting world. I admit that the book is the beginning of the book was a bit slow paced. I still really enjoyed it because the language is really rich and the world is very interesting. Um, I think by the middle of the book uh, there were a lot of action and especially the end of the book was really action packed which I really enjoyed. But because the beginning of the book was kind of slow and it was taking me a while to read it just because the font is tiny. It's tiny and really gray. Uh, that's a paperback UK edition by the way really beautiful but the font is horrible so just because the beginning was really slow I'm giving the book four stars not five as I anticipated but I still really enjoyed it I cannot wait to jump into book number two I am really behind with the read along just because they started it on May 23rd and I only received this book at the beginning of June I believe I started reading it right away but because I ordered books number two and three and didn't expect them to come anytime soon. I was trying to sort of prolong my pleasure because I was really enjoying it. That's why it took me a while to read it. But nevertheless, a very pleasurable read. Cannot wait to jump into book number two. And I also plan to do a separate video review which will contain spoilers to the book because I want to do a spoilery discussion. I had a, like, I had a lot of questions. And I know that it will probably be answered down the road, but I, I want to sort of document my speculations and then to be able to, you know, jump into books number two and three. And when I finally find answers to my questions, I will be able to come back to my video and see whether I guessed anything right or I made a lot of mistakes. So I cannot wait to read book number two that's on my list and I... If you are into high fantasy, if you are really interested in reading very well written fantasy world, I th there is like a bit of violence, a bit of magic, and um, there is a, a lot of political intrigue. If you enjoy this sort of books, I highly recommend you join the read along. Another book that I read this week was Every Heart at Doorway by Shannon McGuire. I saw this book mentioned by Cece on her channel during a readathon, and she said that she was really impressed by how the magical and whimsical the writing was. I admit this was a bit of a spontaneous purchase for me. I usually prefer to, uh, you know, borrow books from the library especially if I know nothing about them or if I'm, I've never read anything by the author, uh, author before but when I heard Cece really talk about how she was impressed by the writing and also the fact that it had an asexual character in the book even though it's not the main plot I immediately just went on Amazon and ordered it this is not really a novel it's a novella the book itself is pretty short it's about 160 pages, I believe. It's a YA fantasy or rather magical realism type of story. It's about a girl, Nancy, who um, was 
taken to another world. She essentially escaped a real world by opening a door and uh, getting into the world of dead where she spent some time, but then she had to leave. And when she rejoined the world, real world that we know, she found that she's not able to cope. So she goes to a special school for children who used to uh, leave or who came back from fantasy worlds. That's in a way um, a story about kids uh, that say went to Narnia and then came back and how they have to adapt to a real world. That's a synopsis. I don't want to read you whatever is here at the back of the book. I went into the book not knowing anything about it except for it was beautifully written. And to be completely honest, I am so happy that I never read this part just because this is essentially just uh, a paragraph of text from the book instead of synopsis. But I really enjoyed the book. I I was taken really by surprise by how I enjoyed this book. I think on second or third page, I realized that this will be definitely one of my favorite reads of this year. Um, this is a very lyrical and whimsical and very magical and I don't know <laughs> what else to say about this book, but the writing is really beautiful. It is a YA story, but the, there is no romance, that the romance is not a focus of it, but there is a bit of um, gore and, uh, you know, creepiness to the book as well. And there is also murder. Yes, there is a murder mystery among all of the hot whimsical stuff. So. I really enjoyed this book and when I went on Goodreads I found out that this is supposed to be book number one in the series and apparently we can expect book number two in 2017 and book number three in 2018. I don't know whether it's true or not. I will be really really happy if there is any sort of sequel. But to be completely honest, this book can be read as a standalone because the story wraps itself up at the end of the book. And um, I really, really recommend it. I don't want to recommend it as a diversity read. I don't want to recommend it as anything else because this book is really, really good piece of fiction when it comes to magical realism. And I think that if you're not sure whether you like fantasy or you, if you're not sure whether you like, you know, um, YA magical realism type of stories, definitely go and check this one out because you'll probably like this one. I loved it and I gave it 4.5 stars. Um, half a star less just because it was too short. It was too short and also kind of figured out the, the murderer right away, but that's just me, I guess. <laughs> loved it. Then I read some manga. I read volume number three of Sailor Moon, which I gave three stars. Volume number four, I gave 3.5 stars. Volume number five, I gave 3.5 stars. And volume number six, I gave 3.75, almost four stars. I'm not going to talk about the plot of this, but I want to say that the most of the arc was about Chibiusa whom I don't really like. She's the one on the cover here of volume number six. She's my least favorite character of all warriors. She's really annoying and I don't really understand why Usagi was so jealous of her. And I honestly, even though I did like her as um, as like, you know, evil version of herself as black lady, I really enjoy her more when she was evil than when she was good. I also found that her attraction to Mamoru was kind of weird. I don't know, like, it's there are some things about Chibiusa that do not really sit well with me. So I, I was not a huge fan of those parts. And since especially I watched those episodes on um, Sailor Moon Crystal already, I, I wasn't really, you know, excited about the plot or anything. But in the volume number six, we finally get introduced to my favorite characters, and that is Haruka and Michiru. And finally, we get to know more about Order Sanshi, and I'm really excited. This is finally what I want to read, and this is the volume that was finally more exciting for me than the previous ones. Then I read Legal Drug by Clamp. 
This is another manga, and this is manga series, which was put on hiatus back in 2003 or 4. This is omnibus edition of all manga up to date, and I kind of enjoyed it. I think I gave it 3.75 or 4 stars on Goodreads. It was enjoyable. It has a bit of weird, creepy style to it that, that is very common for Clamp. But at the same time, it was missing a lot of, you know, solidness of plot that some other mangas have. Um, I enjoyed it. it. It just has a very incomplete feeling to it. The plot itself is about two guys who work and live at a drugstore uh, whose owner not only provides them with, um, with the work, but also gives them tasks to go and do something. And turns out that those two guys, they actually have some sort of magic powers. And um, they are try either sent to retrieve something or to, um, you know, bring a message or to um, just go and meet someone with pretty much no explanation except for the fact that they have to go and do that and will they will be paid for it. And there, there is a lot of mysterious uh, stuff happening. There is also attraction between those two guys. Um, I don't know, This I kind of enjoyed it, but at the same time, since there is no real conclusion, um, there is, however, a sort of sequel to this uh, to the series, since this one is on hiatus, and that's Drag and Drop, and there are only two volumes of it so far. Uh, volumes number one, oh, of course, I'm holding it, it's upside down. That's all that we have so far. Unfortunately, the sequel series also went on hold, I think, um, in 2000. 14 or 13. This is the English edition of 2015. I really enjoy the art. I think art is very on par with what um, clamps as a typical art style is, but at the same time, it's not as um, decorated. The pages are not as decorated and are not as there is not that much magic. There is not that much, you know, mystery or there is not that much of a uh, you know, uh, weirdness that uh, was in Axe or Tokyo Babylon, even though Tokyo, Tokyo Babylon was kind of like fluffy version of Axe. But this one, I really enjoyed it. We finally get to know the background uh, stories of two main characters. We also learn more about the owner of the store and his companion. But since this series went on a hiatus, we still don't know what's going to happen next, and volume number two ends with a cliffhanger, and I feel really sad about it. I still gave both volumes about four stars, really enjoyed them, but since we don't have a resolution and we don't really know what's going to happen next, and they basically, both characters are sort of at a standstill because their relationship is also not um, evolving or, um, you know, moving anywhere, I kind of feel, you know, let down because we were teased throughout, you know, Legal Drug and also these two volumes about a possibility of those two getting together and at the same time a possibility of something big happening, but there is nothing. I still enjoyed both, um, both series, or should I call it one series, I'm not even sure, but, um, I gave it about four stars each. Not perfect by any means because they're not finished, but I still enjoyed them. So yeah, here's everything, oops, here's everything that I read in one week and that was a pretty good reading week, I must tell you. Here's everything. And let's talk now about what I'm going to read next. I have more volumes of Sailor Moon manga, but unfortunately I don't have volumes 7 and 8 on hand. Only have 9, 10, 11 and 12. Um, that's a bit silly, but I have to pick those up at the library and because of that I'm not really sure when during the week I will be reading manga But I do have some exciting books that I plan to read first book is the book number four in the Horace Mistress Series by R.A. Stefan. That's an indie author and I've been reading her books pretty much since I think February or March, I'm not even sure but Book number four was recently released and I got an art copy of it and unfortunately I'm a bit late with my review but I finally jumped into the last book in the series. I was just trying to, you know, wait for a bit and not just jump into it just because I wanted to 
I kind of give myself time to reconcile with the fact that there will be no more of those characters. I, I, I really enjoy this series. This is an adult fantasy romance type of story. Very mature content. There is a lot of romance in it and it's very, very diverse. I really enjoy the book and I hope to write a very long summary uh, review of the whole series when I finish it. But I'm about 60% into it and I'm pretty sure that I'll be done with it tomorrow or the day after. Another book that I started last week but haven't finished and I'm looking forward to reading it this week is The Crown's Game by Evelyn Skye. This is a YA fantasy series set in the Russian Empire. It's honestly the very first time, except for the Grisha trilogy, that I encounter a book which is set in Russia. And believe me, it makes me really excited. But at the same time, I was really apprehensive. That's the reason why I borrowed this book from the library and did not buy it. I'm really apprehensive because I'm not really sure if the author really does justice to the history of Russia. And this book, I'm on um, page 65 right now, so I'm pretty, pretty early at the very beginning of the book. And so far, it's very interesting, but at the same time, I'm still very apprehensive. I'm not sure whether I enjoyed this book or not, just because I feel as if um, there will be a lot of cliches when it comes to Russian culture. But I might be mistaken. If this book proves me wrong, I will be very happy. So far, so good. I did not find any... Well, I did find actually two little inconsistencies, but I'm going to talk about those in my review. I hope to finish this book this week, and I do plan to review, to have a separate review of it. This is the story about uh, a girl who is an enchantress and she's going to compete in the crowns game in the game to become the enchantress for the Tsar. It's a very interesting premise. There's a strong female character. There's another two male characters that will definitely um, somehow be involved all together like in one. I predict um, I predict a love triangle. I do predict it even though I yeah, I, I, I wish it wasn't the case, but I do predict it. I don't want to say anything because I'm so early in the book. But since it's a YA fantasy and I read a very good um, adult fantasy recently, which is Robin Hobb, I find it that the language is a bit too simplistic for me. Once again, too early to make any decisions and uh, to come to any conclusions, but I... I'm really excited to read this book. There is a lot of hype about it. And if you read this book, please let me know down below, but no spoilers, what you thought about this book. And once I'm done with the Crown's Game, I plan to jump into Royal Assassin by Robin Hobb. And this is book number two in the Far Sierra trilogy. Um, as I mentioned before, I wasn't sure when my book number two or three will arrive. So I was trying to prolong my reading of Assassin's Apprentice. Turns out when the book was dispatched on June 20th, I got it actually in four days, which is unbelievable because it came from UK and I could not really believe that it took just four days compared to three weeks previously. And all of my orders with Book Depository usually take about four, like three to four weeks to arrive. And this one was like, really, it was a miracle. So I'm really excited to read this book, even though I'm reading the books for the read alone and I'm really behind, I'm still excited to read this one. I didn't really listen to any audiobooks um, the past week. I did listen for a bit to Carry On by Rainbow Rowell for maybe about like 10 minutes, but I wasn't really getting into audiobook. I wasn't really feeling it. I wanted to read an actual physical book. So I didn't really listen to any audiobooks. And to be honest, I'm not sure if I will be listening to any this week because I have so many quite exciting books to read. Well, this is it, guys. I need to wrap up this video. I've been filming it for way too much time and I'm losing the natural light. So thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you very soon. Bye! <laughs> I just saw an airplane fly by, like a small one. I mean, yeah, kind of weird. Okay, never mind. 
Yeah, I get like helicopters and planes and whatnot flying by my window. That's yeah. But this guy is so beautiful. I have to take a picture of this. Be right back. I had so many false starts on this video. It's uh.